Hi guys, my name is Emily and this is my fourth video in my genre exploration series and for June I read Paul Auster's Oracle Night. Paul Auster was born February 3rd, 1947. He's an American novelist and poet. He writes absurd fiction, crime fiction, and mystery fiction, and he's part of the postmodernist literary movement. Postmodernism is a 20th century movement in basically everything that departed from modernism and it includes skeptical interpretations of things like culture, literature, and art. He's part of that movement, but this is one of his later works. Oracle Night was published in 2003. Oracle Night by Paul Auster is about a writer named Sidney Orr who has recently recovered from, miraculously recovered from some sort of serious illness where everyone thought he was gonna die and his like comeback as part of his like healing process he starts to write again and he the fictional writer in oracle night he writes about a fictional publisher named nick bowen who one day decides to just give up everything in his life and just start fresh in a new place because i guess bowen realizes how random life is like life is just based on a series of coincidences you have no way to control it so yeah so he just he gives up his job and his wife and he just goes to a new city. Or the fictional writer ends up writing Bowen into a dead end. Quite literally, Bowen is stuck in, locked in a fallout shelter with no way to get out and no one knows he's there because the man whose fallout shelter it is, is dead. So he literally writes Bowen into a dead end and then it's just like, now what? How do I fix this? We flip kind of between Orr's real life and his story kind of seamlessly. In Orr's real world, there's some weird stuff going on with his wife Grace and his friend John Truce. And John Truce is also a famous writer in this world. And John Truce is ill and has a blood clot in his leg and is couch bound for fear of dislodging the clot. Review. That's, that's basically what you need to know about what's going on in the book. Now here are my thoughts. It was a bit mind-boggling, but I enjoyed it. I loved the characters. I loved getting to know Orr's fictional character, Nick. It was kind of interesting to look at the layers on layers of fiction and how or like how Oster is playing with fiction. Here is the thing that I have the most trouble wrapping my mind around. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, what do I do with this? So Paul Oster, real, writes about Sidney Orr, fictional. Sidney Orr writes about Nick Bowen who is a publisher who has the manuscript of another fictional writer, Sylvia Maxwell. Sylvia Maxwell wrote a fictional novel called Oracle Night. Sidney Orr is fictional. Nick Bowen is double fictional. Sidney Maxwell is double fictional because she's also real in Nick Bowen's world. So Sidney and Nick are both double fictional. Then we have the triple fictional Oracle Night which is Sidney Maxwell's triple fictional novel. It's a philosophical novel about predicting the future, which is basically the novel I'm literally holding in my hands right now, Oracle Night. Oracle Night is a novel that kind of plays with writing and how writing can predict or make the future. Let me explain. It's kind of about how writing has power and the written word having literal power, not just in like the, I gave a good speech and I inspired people, writing has power. So literally the act of writing is something powerful that actually physically affects the fictional people in the novel. Or writes about a man who hits a dead end, or writes about a love affair. Then he takes these stories in which the characters are loose mirror images of people in his real life, and he takes the things that he's written in this blue notebook and he just rips them up and he throws them in the garbage. And it seems like his writing these fictional doubles and then literally destroying the fictional doubles has real life consequences for the people in Sidney Orr's life. So Grace and John Truce, etc. So the novel seems to really play with the power of fiction. My final thoughts. The novel has footnotes because how the novel is told is like we're reading Sidney Orr's thoughts. Writing in the 1980s 
and he's writing about these events in between he's writing this story about Nick Bowen. So it's like we're looking at his journal. And then, like 20 years later, something like that, he's reflecting on the journal, and he adds footnotes. Which are the most- I don't know if you can see this. Can you see it? Can you see the footnote? It's a footnote. This big thing is a footnote. And not only is it a giant footnote, but it goes on for four pages. You're reading the story and like sometimes the little number for the footnote happens in the middle of a paragraph and then you spend four pages. There's more footnote on these four pages than there is real time story. And then you have to go back to that number and be like, what was I just reading about? Because I've totally read this reflective tangent. It's kind of cool that Sidney Orr reflects on his time in the 80s but also really hard to read. Like it kind of messes with the flow, which is probably the effect. I'm not sure I like that effect. Just, you know, my thing if you're into that kind of thing. Cool. I'm not a big fan of footnotes in general, in any sort of text. I just feel like if it's worth saying, you should put it in the work. I realize it's supposed to be a reflection, so he couldn't put it in the work at the time because he's reflecting with years of thought on this thing, but in general, I hate footnotes. So footnotes, yeah, 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 I didn't really like that. I know if you've been in my presence for like the past month, you've just heard about me being like, my mind is blown with this book, and it probably sounded like I didn't like it, but I did actually, like now that I'm at the end of it and looking back, kind of reflecting for this video, despite the footnotes, despite the explosion of my brain, I really liked it. I liked the characters. I actually really liked Sidney Orr's story about Nick Bowen. I know it went nowhere. I really got into the little story, like I was kind of invested in Nick Bowen's story and I wanted more. I was a little sad when he was like, yeah, I locked him in a cellar. That's the end of that. Like I wanted, I wanted more from Nick Bowen who just walked away from his life. So on Goodreads I've given the book four out of five stars because I liked it but in my mind it wasn't a perfect book. I feel like it would have been better if I'd felt more connected to the main character, Sidney Orr, opposed to Sidney Orr's fictional character, Nick Bowen. Let me know if you've read Oracle Knight, what you think of it. Did you find Nick Bowen's story more engaging? Did you find Sydney Orr more engaging? I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'd also like to thank my lovely professor who recommended Oracle Knight. He's definitely recommended an interesting novel and I'd like to thank him for, you know, giving me this thing to think about. Links to all of my social media will be in the description below, and I will see you in July with a review of The Man Who Mistook His White for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales by Oliver Sacks. Thank you for watching. Bye!